Welcome to a lesson on the division of fractions. Let's start with a review of the concept of division. If we consider 6 divided by 2, another way of thinking of this is asking how many 2's there are in 6. Looking at our model for 6, if we make groups of 2, notice there are 3 groups of 2. 1, 2, 3. This is the reason why 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. However, it is possible to write every division problem as a multiplication problem. Remember, we can make 2 a fraction by putting it over 1. So if we went or 2, instead of dividing by 2, we could multiply by the reciprocal and get the same result. So we'll write 6 as 6 over 1. And then we'll change a division to multiplication and multiply by the reciprocal of 2 over 1, which is 1 over 2. Now that we have it in this form, we want to simplify if possible. Notice how the 2 and the 6 share a common factor of 2. There's 1, 2, and 2, and 3, 2's, and 6. So now we can multiply. 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times 1 is 1. And of course, the result is 3, the same as our quotient. Now let's consider 2 divided by 1 half. We can think of this as asking how many one-halves there are in two. So if we go back over to our model and now make groups the size of one-half, we would divide this in half and divide this in half. Notice how now we have one, two, three, four groups the size of one-half. Therefore, two divided by one-half is equal to four. But when we have division involving a fraction, we're always going to write these as multiplication problems. And we do this, again, by multiplying by the reciprocal of 1 half. So we could write 2 as 2 over 1 here. We'll change the division to multiplication. And now we'll multiply by the reciprocal of 1 half, which would be 2 over 1. Notice how the result is 2 times 2, which is 4, all over 1 times 1, which is 1, which gives us 4. Let's go ahead and formalize this. To divide two fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. So we can write every division problem as a multiplication problem if we multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. Notice here we're dividing by C over D, and then when we convert to multiplication, we're multiplying by D over C. So for another example, if we have 3 divided by 1 half, we would write 3 over 1 divided by 1 half, and then instead of dividing by 1 half, we would multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2 over 1. And 3 times 2 is equal to 6, and 1 times 1 is equal to 1. So we have 6, which means there are 6 1 halves in 3. Now there's one more thing to remember. Just as when we were multiplying fractions, it is recommended that we simplify out all the common factors between the numerators and denominators before we multiply. Therefore, the result will be in simplest form. So let's take a look at some more examples. Here we have 3 eighths divided by 4 ninths. Now it may be tempting to try to simplify this, but remember we have to write it as a multiplication problem before we try to simplify. So instead of dividing by 4 ninths, we're going to multiply by 9 fourths. So we can write this as 3 eighths times 9 fourths. And notice now that we have it as a multiplication problem, 3 does not share any common factors with 8 or 4, and 9 doesn't share any common factors with 4 or 8 either. So this is not going to simplify, so we can go ahead and multiply. 3 times 9 is equal to 27, and 8 times 4 is equal to 32, which is our simplified answer. Next we have 6 27ths divided by 16 ninths. So the first step is to write this as a multiplication problem. So we'll have 6 27ths times the reciprocal of 16 ninths, which is 9 sixteenths. And now before we multiply, we do want to simplify. There's a couple ways of showing the simplification. If we recognize that 9 and 27 share a common factor of 9, the 9 would simplify to 1 since there's 1 9 and 9. 27 would simplify to 3 since there are 3 9s and 27. 6 and 16 also share a common factor of 2. There are 3 2's and 6, and 8 2's and 16. But notice how here we also have a common factor of 3. 3 over 3 would simplify to 1 over 1. And now we can multiply, knowing the result will be in simplest form. 
the numerator is 1 times 1, that's 1. And the denominator is 1 times 8, which is equal to 8. Now, if we find this method for simplifying confusing, remember I also showed that you can write everything in prime factored form and actually see all of the common factors. What I mean by that is, if we have 6 27ths times 9 sixteenths, the prime factorization of 6 would be 2 times 3. The prime factorization of 27, well, 27 is 3 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3. So we'd have 3 factors of 3. The prime factorization of 9 is 3 times 3. The prime factorization of 16, well, that would be 4 times 4, and 4 is equal to 2 times 2. So we have four factors of two. This method does take a little bit more time, but the nice thing about it is we can now see all of the common factors. Here we have a three over three, three over three, three over three, and also two over two. And now we can multiply. The numerator is a product of ones, so that will be one. The denominator is two times two times two, which is equal to eight. Notice how, regardless of what method we use to simplify, the result is the same. Let's take a look at two more examples. The first thing we should recognize about this problem is we want 12 to be in fraction form, so we can write this as 12 over 1. And now we're going to write this as a multiplication problem, so we'll have 12 over 1 times the reciprocal of 8 thirds, which is 3 eighths. And now we'll simplify. 12 and 8 share a common factor of 4. There are two 4s in 8, and there are three 4s in 12. 3 times 3 is equal to 9, and 1 times 2 is equal to 2. Well, if we wanted to, the prime factorization of 12 would be 3 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So we'd have 3 times 2 times 2 over 1 times 3 is prime. And 8 is 4 times 2, and 4 is 2 times 2, so we have 3 factors of 2. And now we can see our common factors. Here's 2 over 2, 2 over 2. And now we can multiply. 3 times 3 is 9, and 1 times 2 is 2. So, of course, the result is the same. And now we'll take a look at one more. First step, write this as a multiplication problem. So we'll have 28 over 75. Instead of dividing by 16 25ths, we're going to multiply by 25 sixteenths. Well, 25 and 75 share a common factor of 25. There's 1 25 and 25, and 3 25s and 75. 28 and 16 share a common factor of 4. There are 4 4s and 16, and there are 7 4s and 28. So now we'll multiply. 7 times 1 is 7 and 3 times 4 is equal to 12. But you'll probably find when these numbers get larger and larger, it can be more difficult to use this form of simplifying. So let's go ahead and write the prime factorization for the numerators and denominators and simplify that way one more time. So for 28, we have 4 times 7 and 4 is 2 times 2. So we have 2 times 2 times 7. For 75, we'd have 25 times 3. 25 is 5 times 5. So we have 5 times 5 times 3. 25 is equal to 5 times 5. And for 16, I think we showed this in the previous screen, we have 4 times 4, and each 4 is 2 times 2, so we have 4 factors of 2. And now we can see all the common factors. Here we have 5 over 5, 5 over 5, 2 over 2, 2 over 2. And now we multiply. The numerator is 7, and the denominator is 3 times 2 times 2, which is equal to 12. Okay, hope you found this video helpful. Next we'll take a look at dividing sine fractions.